Hey everyone, Ian King here with your Winning Investor Daily weekly update. And joining me this week is my colleague, Steve Fernandez. Steve, what's happening out there? What's going on for Thanksgiving this week? Going to visit some family. Oh yeah, are you gonna, so any hot topics of conversation going? Are you gonna tell them to buy uh, some Ethereum this year? They just gotta, you know, yeah, we've talked about Ethereum in the past. I did buy Ethereum in the past. Okay. Um, They just got a new house, so talk about that probably oh great congratulations so steve yeah i know we're gonna talk about solar this week is your uh your family's new house uh are they considering putting some solar panels on the house or they have them already i know that they've considered it um i know that a lot of the uh new homeowners around here are considering it for sure okay so that brings us to what we're going to discuss this week i know you steve you've got a chart that you want to share with our viewers on the percentage of global power generation. Why don't you put that chart up there and uh, explain what this is all about and what's happening? What is this big trend we're seeing? Sure. So right now, solar and wind in particular, they occupy somewhere around, you know, 10, 12 percent of global power generation. Um, So that's expected to climb a lot, probably closer towards 40, 45, maybe even 50 percent by 2050. Um, I know you and I are on the camp that solar will probably dominate that, even though the chart doesn't show that. Um, And we can we'll talk about some of the reasons for that here in a bit. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. Um, I think solar is going to outpace the wind specifically for the idea that, you know, it's very decentralized. You can purchase solar panels on your house and for the first time you can combine them with a cheap battery. So this is another part of this convergence of technology that's leading to you know, an explosion in the energy sector. Um, let's talk about lithium ion batteries. Everybody talks about the batteries and how they're driving electric vehicles. And you know, every automaker is putting tens of billions of dollars into battery development. But this is actually gonna be key for energy just as much as it is for mobility. Uh, Talk about the prices of lithium ion batteries over the last decade and what we could see going forward in the 2020s. Sure. So lithium ion batteries, you can see in this chart, have declined dramatically, you know, over 90 percent. And it's hard to say in the near term where those prices will be because there's been lithium shortages, et cetera. But we're looking at probably another 50 percent decline, you know, in the next decade or so. Um, So that's going to be, like you said, influential for renewable energy adoption, electric vehicle adoption. Um, and when you think about it, I think it's about uh, 33%, one third percent or one third of a car's cost, EV's cost is a battery. Um, so think about that from a power storage at your home standpoint as well. And it, it occupies a lot of the cost. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And so we've got this uh, technology that's becoming cheaper. And at the same time, it's just getting an infusion of capital from governments around the world. I know that the European Union passed an $800 billion bill uh, earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year, uh, focus on clean and renewable energy. And here in the United States, we just had the Build Back Better bill passed in the House, which is most likely going to get approved in the Senate. And you know, we looked at this earlier I just want to share with our viewers, $550 billion in clean energy investments, and that $300 billion is going to go to support clean energy investments and deployment, improving energy efficiency, and encourage vehicle electrification. Now, there is a significant amount of investment tax credits in this bill geared towards what's called uh, you know, clean energy storage or standalone energy storage. And I think this is so key for the solar markets because you're now going to get a tax credit on the battery that you put in your garage, as well as the solar panels that you put on your roof. And you pair those two together, you know, and you're talking about the ability to actually live off the grids. So you don't ever have to worry about the power grid. And, you know, there, we talked about this as well. There are some states like in California where they've had rolling brownouts and some areas had blackouts because of the wildfires. And all areas of the country, whether it be floods or, or, or storms, the amount of power outages has gone up significantly in the last couple of decades, uh, just as a result of, of natural causes. So, 
you know, I think this is a, a really going to facilitate and energize the solar sector even more, which will lead it to outpace investors' expectations, you know, in the 2020s. What are your thoughts on that, Steve? I agree. I think it's attractive from a resident, residential standpoint, especially um, if, like you described, if the government's throwing money at you to go make that decision and switch over to um, mm -hmm. like solar energy, for example. Uh, but let's not forget about the utility side of things where, you know, the real, real investment is coming in. And these are where the utility companies are really, you know, taking all of their operations right now, which might be natural gas, for example. And now that's becoming, you know, solar. So utility right. scale battery storage will help power that trend. Yeah. And I know you talked about somewhere around a little bit over $1 trillion between Europe and the U.S. in terms of um, renewable energy investment. So I was looking at some data from Bloomberg. Um, looks like we're going to need about 1.7 trillion per year in today's dollars to really accelerate that renewable energy adoption um, if we want to have like completely uh, renewable energy by 2050. So I expect that to continue. The easiest way to do that, like you said, is tax credits or some right. sort of incentive to cover that uh, production or that investment. Um, so yeah, wait, let's see what happens, but I expect the same to occur. Well, it's not just tax credits though. I mean, you starting to see government mandates. So like in California, all new homes have to be built with a solar installation now. And, or, and, and I think other states are looking at that too, but the, the driving catalyst for this as well is, you know, you might not think that there's global warming, you might not believe in it, but the millennials and generation Y, I mean, this is the cause that they're taking up. And so if you think about this from a demographic perspective, right, millennials are the prime working age. I think the average age of millennials is 32, and they're also the, the average age of first time home buyers. You know, the next couple of decades, the trends in investment are going to be shaped by their tastes and the things that they want. And one of those causes is global warming and how we're going to fix that. So, you know, solar and renewables is an investment that I really believe has legs here and just going to keep running over the next decade. Yeah, I agree. Um, and we're seeing that now. I mean, governments around the world are pressured, like you said, by whether it be millennials or just those uh, groups of people that really want to drive um, cleaner energy sources. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, earlier this month, there was the U.S. and 19 other countries had committed to stop financing fossil fuel projects altogether by the end of the year. So basically, they're saying, if you want to put up a new plant, we're not going to help you pay for it. Right. right. And that's dramatic. You know, that's drastic that instead of that, they're just putting that towards renewable energy sources. So, yeah, as as publics or citizens get younger and they're really shaping our, our countries, there's going to be pressure because these are the people that are voting these elected officials into office. They don't really have a choice. So as a millennial, Steve, you're going to tell your family on Thanksgiving dinner that it's time to get solar on the house, huh? I'll have to. I mean, if they're going to pay you for it, why not, right? The government's All right. going to pay you. Great. Awesome. So, Steve, thanks again for uh, this week's uh, webinar. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Also, let us know in the comments uh, what you discussed on your Thanksgiving holiday with the family. We'd love to hear what those hot topics are. Uh, I'm Ian King. He's Steve Fernandez. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Take care.